guys, we're gonna do another one just to show you guys. <laughs> All right, guys, today we're going to be building a 13BREW for Scrap Life Garage. So they have a 13BREW that it was supposedly a low mile engine. It ended up not looking like it. You know, that's not 5,000 mile what a bearing should look like. We've been clearancing the rotors. We gave it clearancing for high RPM, high power. This engine right here is going into a yellow FD which if you're an og you know that this car it's uh, ernie taylor's rx7 so he sold it years ago and nothing ever happened and this was one of the fastest street rx7s in the East Coast back in the day. So right now we're, we got the opportunity to build the motor for Scrap Life, which uh, they bought the car. So we're gonna build them a nice engine, semi-peripheral, big turbo. You know, uh, we're ha gonna have Kaiju Fab do the fabrication. We're just gonna handle the motor because that's what we do. So right now I have the rotating assembly on the machine. I still haven't put the weights, but I went ahead and got them clearance. So right now, it's side clearance. I have to clean it up, uh, deburr it, but pretty much we're gonna weigh it, weight match it, replicate the weight, put it on the machine, and spin it. So part of that, uh, our rebuild services is that, and especially with high performance stuff, definitely have to clearance it. So we're also gonna dowel it, which we have the mill to do that, and that is needed for the horsepower that we're planning on making with this car. It's gonna be uh, over 700 horsepower. Pretty much the same setup that we did on Granis's engine. It made 730. So, but yeah, so pretty much I'm gonna wrap up the, the balancing. We'll give you guys a little spin of before and after. You know, obviously it's gonna be a little off because we took 40 grams off each rotor and we're gonna weight match them, but it had originally, it came in with an ACT counterweight which we know this is not really balanced to anything specifically it's just a generic counterweight that act sells guesstimating what the balancing is we have the rotors weight match we got 4320 and then this one right here 4320 so they're matching perfectly now we're going to replicate the bob weights spin the machine all right we're doing the first spin this should let us know how far off it is with that counterweight. Again, it's going to be off because we, you know, at some point, because we did change the, the weight of the rotors. So let's just get a base here, see what we're looking at. Uh, we had already shown that there was damage to the bearings when we took the engine apart. So that's really going to show it. So again, 37 grams in the rear, 18 in the front. Now the front was probably good. The reason that the front is off right now is because we did remove 40 grams off the rotor. Now the rear, the rear is showing that it's way off and that is because it has an ACT Conway that's aftermarket. This was never balanced to this motor. ACT does not know what your rotors weigh. So there's no way for them to just be like, yeah, this is good to go. So now if we save this, I can show you 
that that's what that imbalance translates to. 37 grams turns into almost a thousand pounds of force on the bearing at 10,000 RPM. Now the front, 14 grams is good out the door from Mazda, uh, that's factory spec. But you know, it does, it's not, it's an 18, but it's nothing compared to this over here, 37. I got this port pretty much almost done. Runners polished up. So I have to work on the middle plate, the rear plate, which are right here. Then all three of those plates are gonna get powder coated. The housings, uh, they're already peripheral port, uh, semi-peripheral. So after I port this, we're gonna put it on the end mill. We're gonna drill for the, uh, for the dowel pins. And I'm gonna show you guys uh, little tips and tricks to get them to be a little bit stronger. What we're doing right now is we're reaming for additional dial pins. OEM, it only has one year and one year. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna add extra strength by adding extra dial pin holes. So pretty much, I don't wanna go all the way, but this is gonna be extra strength right here. So it's gonna be one here, one here, and one here. What that's gonna do, it's gonna keep it from twisting. So what happens in high horsepower builds like this, it's gonna twist and it will crack this dowel pin right here. And that's the only thing that keeps it from moving. So we're just gonna add extra ones to give it that much more strength. All right, these are done. And perfect. Now that we have it drilled all the studs and stuff, we have to put it in the parts washer, try to get as much metal as we can out of it, and then it blow them dry. We got done with the doweling and now we're gonna get ready to build these rotors. We have to do bearings, so we have everything we need to build this engine. We have rotor bearings, main bearings, oil control O-rings, front and rear main seal, front cover gasket, side seal, side seal springs, apex seal springs, corner seal springs, corner seals, and apex seals and water seals. This is everything you need to put an engine together. So we're gonna get started building these rotors. You've seen these this a million times, so I don't wanna drag on the video, but I'm gonna start building these rotors and then we'll get to the stacking part. Got done pressing the bearings, freshies for the stationaries, along with the rotors. This is what they looked like before. He was told this engine had, I, I forgot if it was five or 9,000 miles. Definitely did not. Uh, as you can see, this is really high mileage motor. We have some fresh bearings on there, which is definitely needed for the horsepower that we're gonna make in. Next is cleaning up the rotors, cutting side seals. Each one of these is a little bit longer than it's supposed to. So we have to cut it to length, two thousands clearance on the end. And that will give us a uh, really good compression and pretty much, uh, no blow by whatsoever. And let's start cutting side seals and keep moving along. I got these two side seals cut with inspect. So we go pull it to this side. Right there. And then this one, same thing. 
Now this one is too tight, it won't go in. So th even though it goes into a slot, you can't use it. Because what happens is when heat expands the side seal, the side seal starts pushing outwards and it pinches these corner seals. So if you can see right here, see it's moving the side seal, it's too, it's too tight. So we need 2000 clearance on the side seal. So we're gonna keep going at it, pretty much remove it. You go on a flat piece of granite or glass or whatever you have, and you have some 400 grit sandpaper. And you keep going back and forth, back and forth until you get the clearance that you need. So now a little bit too tight. So we'll go back to the stone. This should be plenty right here. So put the side seal back in and we're gonna test the clearance and there you go. 2000s goes in and out freely it doesn't it's independent to the corner seal is not touching and that's how you clear side seals on a rotary engine the rotors are together everything's clearance to where it's supposed to be at so i'm gonna set up the engine on the engine stand i'm gonna put the camera on time lapse and we're gonna stack this engine real quick He's just dipping. All he oh, wanted was the engine, I guess. Like, <laughs> engine's built, wrapped up, back of the truck, and he's gonna take it back home and install it. He told me this thing's gonna make a thousand. That's what he told me. So we'll we'll see if it holds together. Well, they're gonna install it, and hopefully by the end of next month, it's gonna be running. It'll be running at the RX7 event. If you're not so, planning on being there, be there. Yeah. So they're holding a roll racing event that's gonna be RX7s only. So we're gonna get one of our cars ready, possibly two, and we're gonna go over there and you know, get whooped. he's got a we got a rotary built for him, but you know he's he's also not in my good side because he's got two swap uh, FDs. So you know, you gotta show him. I, I am the enemy, and I'm looking forward <laughs> to you know everyone showing up and showing me what they got. You guys want to go over there and see some uh, RX7 and RX7 crime, whether it's LS, 2J, or rotary. Go check it out.